Hello YouTube and Mr. Forks back at last. I am sorry, been so busy. I really have been. So today we're going to be taking a look at creating a professional looking poster inside of Photoshop. There are lots of things that make a poster seem professional. So I'm going to go over the basics and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at creating a poster from a single image. And somewhere down the line we'll do one that involves composition of multiple images. Maybe you have a few actors and you want to like merge the images together so that it looks cool and you're showing who's in your film. So let's start off, let's go international paper. I'm going to set up the settings for our poster. For the tutorial I'm just going to use A4 so it loads slightly faster. Then resolution I've set to 300 which is a really nice high resolution. Uh, if you're actually making a poster you might want to do A3 uh, depending on what ultimately the size you it is you're trying to print it at and we're going to call this practice poster so I'm going to start off by importing a still image you can see that I've got a whole gallery of still images I can use loads of images with different exposures and some of them are really cool and these are still photography for my short film and I'm going with this one but obviously I'm in it which you may want, you may not want but in this case I don't want so let's just scale it up hold down shift to ensure you get a uniform scale I really want her to be the centre of the image and that looks good, I'm going to hit enter so obviously the first thing you want to do is basic image manipulation and the clear thing to do is to get rid of me first things first luckily for me I also have a second image that doesn't have me in it and we're going to import that as well Okay, hit enter just how it is and then we're going to set the transfer mode to overlay and now we can scale it and line it up perfectly so what I've done is I've made a few adjustments and now I'm happy with this image next thing I'm going to do um, is I know I want some text down the bottom and I think that all the grass and uh, fidelity of the grass may distract from the actual text so I'm going to add a blur First of all, I'm going to duplicate the layer. Command Shift L is my shortcut. There is actually a shortcut for it. I forgot what it was there. I'm just going to add a box blur. We increase that. It's quite like a digital kind of effect. And now I know text will be easier to read over here. However, obviously, I don't want the whole image blurred. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer mask and then with the gradient tool selected I'm going to gradient from about here down to here um, and I think that's a little steep so let's try it again like that and I tell you what we could even um, blur some stuff out from the sides as well, so what I'm going to do is grab the brush tool make sure it's set high and no hardness at all and just blur out the sides so it's kind of like she's entrapped in this uh, mysterious world wonderful so to create credits, the main font to use is a font I got off of 1001fonts.com and that is SF Movie Poster. We find it. SF Movie Poster, here we go. Then we can do, say, Alan and Staff presents. Now what you want to do 
is the actual names and titles and such are in capitals and then everything else is in lowercase so we're going to add a space and then we're going to go to lowercase and put a film by Dan Allen in other case and even the presents needs to be in lowercase and Dan Allen presents and then put it in a speech marks amnesia starring in lowercase capitals Lily staff and then you want to so on and so forth you want to put stuff like director of photography Dan Allen and you need to grab a DVD case and just have a look and you can see the kind of order they put it in and always right at the end is directed by Dan Dan Allen except the whole of the name needs to be in capitals wonderful and obviously you'd have more credits than that or maybe you don't who's one to judge and as I'm putting it in the right hand corner I'm actually going to align it to the right so we can do that in the paragraph settings we've got a line to right and then put it in the corner like that. You also have your logos on a movie poster. If we put Dan on a bouncy castle, you can see that I've got some logos. If I import this, press enter, I'm just going to one tool. The black so I need to rasterize the layer first and then command T turns out I need to get rid of some more and then scale it down and if you have any more logos uh, multiple production companies whatever and you just want to start lining them up and putting them in the corners. Now the main thing obviously is the title. You maybe have a specific font you want for the title. I'm going to go with a typewriter style font. I'm going to go with Courier. I'm going to type the name of the film which is Amnesia. And then I can I go into the move tool, command T, and I can scale it. And as you can see, one of the main things which is good about this poster is the simplicity. Simplicity is good. Trust. And I'm going to double click on this text layer. That's going to give me some layer styles. And I'm going to add a drop, drop shadow just to make it stand out a bit more. Increase the spread, the size, change the angle to zero degrees, I don't really want it offset at an angle. Increase the opacity, a little bit of noise. I also want a glow, two contrasting effects. Which is cool. Just like that. Bevel and emboss. Just like that. Very quickly we've created a nice title. And what we can even do is add some more text. And this is going to be again in SF movie poster font of 1001fonts.com do, do select our amnesia title and then type in 
SF movie poster. I want it to say a film by Dan Allen. What we can do is we can grab this and we can put it underneath, just like that. You might have some names of the actors in it. And more often than not, these are in a similar comparable font to the actual title. So we're going to duplicate the title layer, bring it down. We're going to type Lily Staff. We're going to scale it. Scale it so that it's uh, quite small. And there's also another actor who's a lead role in it. And we're gonna, so we're going to duplicate it again. And um, T for the text tool. Right. Mike Allen, who's the other lead character in this. And you can offset that. Because I want to create this like eerie feel. What I'm also going to do, Command T, I'm going to rotate them slightly. And the Mike Allen. Come on, team, I'm going to rotate that the other way. Maybe you have a tagline. Often than not, um, once again in a comparable font. Or at the top, you might have, in generally, a bold font. A bold font. You might have something like this. The greatest. Films of all time. I get a press statement, critique statement, and generally speaking, stuff like that would be in a simple Arial bold font or Arial black. And what's common now is that they're not actually white, sometimes in red. Can we give it just like a yellowy tinge? There you go. You want to go and see this film. And you can even add in some stars. Whatever you want, you know. So very quickly we've created a movie poster which does actually look really quite professional. One of the main things missing is some colour correction. So I'm just going to go to this layer and add in some, uh, let's go for levels to begin with. Okay, crush some blacks. We can merge them two layers just like that. And also, another very popular thing at the moment is grain. So we're going to add noise. Should press the add noise. Make it uniform, make it monochromatic. And just press OK. And now you can see when we zoom in, it's actually got grain. And that's all looking really cool. But this is just a basic tutorial to get you started. In the future, I'll, like I said, I'll do a tutorial on creating like a multiple image composite for a movie poster. But hopefully this is enough to get you playing around and hopefully to make you realise the kind of things you need in a movie poster and also simplicity is best. The use of the off-centre title but the central the central critique point draws your attention to it so you make sure you read it you can see it's a film by me and this blurring of the edges really draws you to the center so that you see this girl who's isolated and you makes you wonder what is this film about and it's just the lots of little things that add to it for instance the blurriness reflects the blurriness of her mind because the film's called amnesia you see what i mean but hopefully this has been help and hopefully you can have a go yourselves. Uh, let me know what you think, rate, comment, I'm pleased to be back. I'll be doing another tutorial tomorrow on creating the basic outlines for creating a intro video in Cinema 4D. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys soon.